breakout session um, with our Kumu Kayapuni. Um, well, Kumu Kayapuni, I'm in Apukana. Lako Apukana. Yeah? Um, hello, I'm speaking in Hawaiian and you're probably going, what? Okay. <laughs> and it's because, you know, we, we're tr constantly transitioning, right, from Olelo Hawaii, Olelo Haole. Um, and they wrote all their bios, Mako Olelo Hawaii. So I will sit here and, and Unuhi translate for all of you. <laughs> But we are really, really fortunate today. I'm blessed to have um, five of our pukana, five of our graduates um, from Kamehameha Maui to share with you about um, their experiences in um, Kayapuni education as well as how Kamehameha prepared them for, um, for the work that they do today. And um, yeah, and we'll take questions and answers. Uh, we'll do Q&A at the end. Um, so I'll just let me introduce all of them to you. And it's funny because you all sat in the order that you're listed here. <laughs> oh. So right. you may recognize oh. the last name, but this is Kale Aloha Kaneopio Crozier. Um, she's a Hawaiian um, immersion teacher at Kulakai Puni o Maui Mapa'ia and was raised on Maui Ihi Kapalau Maeva and um, went to school at, um, she started at Kulakaipuni Oanue Nue, which is in Palolo. And that school just happens to be a K-12 immersion school. And so they were, I, I could tell a little story about her because I know her really well. Um, <laughs> but she came oh, from a school that was K-12 with a total student body of about 300. Then we moved here and um, she entered into sixth grade with um, with Kulia at Kalama. And that immersion program, she imagined going from a school of 300 from K-12 down to a school with 1,200 students total plus, um, and the immersion classes being only like about 30 students per class, per grade level. And Kumu Moani was one of her Kumu, um, and so it's an honor for her to sit here and share with you Kumu, I'm sure. Um, graduated from Kamehameha Maui in 2011, entered into Kamehameha in her sophomore year. And um, against all odds, Keokua had a plan. So a month, a month before school started, Kalealoha got accepted. <laughs> she holds a degree in um, English, composition and rhetoric, and that was to defy anyone who said that Hawaiian immersion kids can't major in English. Um, and so we're really proud of her as parents, but as, a, you know, just being part of the Lahui to see our Kayapuni um, students do well and be able to go into all areas and show us that it's possible to be successful in all areas is important to us. Um, presently working on her master's and yeah, Doing good things. We're presently working on our masters. Iola <laughs> <laughs> Harder is, is next to her, and um, you you may know her by many names, right? Iola, uh, Tani, um, all these names. But she's a Johnson girl, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she was also educated Kulakai Puni o Maui Mapaia. Um, I'm just gonna read it because it's easier for me to <laughs> translate reading. O Kapalala. O Kapalalau, Kapalua Kuupuhonua, so her Puuhonua, her place of peace and sanctuary, is Kahakuloa, and entered into Kayapuni um, in Kalamai. Papa Ekolu. Papa Ekolu. Mm -hmm. Oh, Papa Ekolu. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, so in third grade was when she entered into Kayapuni. That must have been interesting. We can talk story about that. Yeah, yeah? Okay. Um, graduate of Kamehameha Maui, class of 2007, so she's the mama of the gang. Um, oh, well, the hiapo, she's the hiapo. She's I have some classmates. <laughs> <laughs> she married Ethan Harders, who um, it was also a graduate, 07 too. Aye. And um, he's from Pilipili, Waikapu, Maui, and that's where they reside with their two keiki, Ke'ala'i, Paiyaeo Kumoku is the Hiapo and Kaliuola is the Muli. And um, she holds a degree in um, elementary education along with um, 
a Hawaiian immersion degree too, yeah, um, and that she received from University of Hawaii Manoa. Mahalo. Mahalo. And next to her is Kulia, Kaluao, and um, Coco Casey. Hello, my yeah. Go skip over. <laughs> yeah, oh, because <laughs> I just realized she's the next one. Oh, so it's cool. Yeah, everybody. Hello, my yeah. Heva hine Hawaii ino Maui mai. Um, also holds kakuloa kakuloa as her um, aina aina her aina her kulaivi. Yeah, Mary Keenan. Good you sisters, Mary's your high school sweethearts. They have two children. Kiohakui Kalani Lao Okeku Kaula Okahale Ia. Um and they are the fire that burns well, they're the ones that ignite her flame to do the work that she does. Um, she's also a graduate from Kamehameha, twenty eleven and after she graduated she went to University of Hawaii Manoa and returned to teach at Kulakayapuni. Omawi Mapa Ia. And so she, they're both teaching second grade, Papa Ingrid. Okay, let me, now let me go back to Koko. <laughs> okay. Um, she says Aloha, and Koko is um, a graduate in the Papa Ohi Alehua. So she actually was the graduate of the very first class that we actually named. Yeah. Papa Lama Mamu Mako. Oh, really? Oh, oh. She's a second one. <laughs> I forgot about the first one. Don't tell him. <laughs> I, I no, think it's they stood out the most, the Papa Ohi Alehua oh, yeah. in 2017. Oh. Didn't they see? Everybody agrees. Yeah, it's that class. Okay. Graduated wow. um, in Hawaiian Studies. Um, the Kalai Olelo, is that a linguistics, linguistics. degree? Yeah, yeah, from University of Hawaii in Hilo last year. Um, and it was so quick not last year, but 2020, but immediately following, she um, got her palapala from Kahua Viola, which is a program at UH Hilo that prepares um, immersion teachers. And that um, she got in 2021. And so she continues her, um, her pursuit of education and a master's degree, yeah, um, in, at Kahaka Ula Oke'eli Kolani. And she's now a high school teacher at Navahio Kalaniopu'u, which is an immersion school, the immersion school in Kea'au. Um, teaches social studies and um, Hawaiian language. That's Papa Eva, so ninth grade, and Hawaiian language in 10th grade, and English in 10th grade. Oh, you, Pa'ana Oi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when, we'll talk about that too. Um, she is also a kumu ekahako ula oke alipolani at UH Hilo, doing good things. All right, save the best for last. Right. This is Malu Dudwa. Many of you know him as Dane. Um, he was Kalealoha's first friend. Yeah. Still am her first friend. <laughs> Graduated in 2011. Um, he continued his education at UH Hilo and Hawaii Community College, graduated from the university system, earning his BA in Hawaiian Studies from Kahakaula, um, College of Hawaiian Language, and his AAS in Hawaii Lifestyles, Hula Track through Unukupukupu. Upon graduating, he began his professional work at the UH Hilo and Hawaii Community College campuses under Hawaii Papa Okeao an initiative to indigenize University of Hawaii System Colleges. During this winter <laughs> solstice in 2019, uh, Malu went through the ritual practice of Uniki Ailolo, which is a traditional graduation rite from Hala Uhula. Anchored in the Hula Aiha'a ritual volcanic fire dancers of Unukupukupu. He now serves as a part-time lecturer for Kahaka Ulo Ke'elikolani and teaching hula and papa mea kanu, so Hawaiian ethnobotany. He also recently transitioned into a new position, working to train faculty and staff of UH Hilo and Hawaii Community College campuses in Hawaiian language, culture, and protocols. Awesome. Okay. Our esteemed okay. panel of the panel. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna open it up and then whoever feels like you wanna respond to that, and if you don't, then I just call you me. Oh. <laughs> Okay. But I wanted to start with um, 
you know, your formative years, if everybody can just kind of share where you went to school before, I think I talked about Kalea Lohang and um, Kulia and Kahai, but maybe Malu and Koko, you guys can share. Where did you start? So I actually went to elementary school at Kahului Elementary. Um, and at that time, um, we were rated one of the lower scoring schools. Um, so the, to have the opportunity to even get accepted into Kamehameha was really big for me. Um, and when that happened, I was like, oh, okay, I guess we're doing this and we'll see how it goes. And lo and behold, I am Puka and graduate from this school. I don't know how, but it worked out. <laughs> Yeah, and you did well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not doing well. <laughs> so um, I'm ac I was actually born on Oahu, so I started at Voyager Charter School oh, <laughs> in wow. in elementary school. Then when we made, moved here, I was in first grade already. Um, so I s went to Kamali'i Eleme Elementary School in Kihei, and then in sixth grade I got into Kamehameha, and then from there on just went. <laughs> All Hawaiian after that. <laughs> <laughs> Mahalo. So, so we're just gonna get into it. Um, we have three Kumu who, um, you know, started at Kayapuni and then came to Kamehameha. We have the two of you who started in English schools and then came to Kamehameha. So I'm wondering about your experience. Um, you know, how because you have different views, right? I mean, you come from an English school into a into a Hawaiian school. Mm -hmm. Um, they come from a Kayapuni school, which is so Hawaiian, mm -hmm. and then they come to Kamehameha. So the picture, I think, is a little different for uh, for you and, and them. So we're, this is great. It's a great combination of Kumu that is sitting here. Mm -hmm. So the experience upon entering into Kamehameha, I think I'd like you to share about that. In regards to Ike Hawaii, Ike Kupuna, mm -hmm. yeah. I think I'm going to pass this on to our Hiapo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, starting <laughs> off is very different when we came to school. You know, there were the buildings weren't even in place. Um, all nice gravel that you like. It was all gravel, not so manicured. Now there's grass. Walking to your parking lot, like I remember skipping over all of those hurdles. Well, you know, minor stuff, but memorable. <laughs> um, it was in a building stage, right? Um, I think that's a great word, even for just the whole school in general, because we're still trying to figure out what we're kind of doing here. And I say we as if I was part of that, but I was just a student back then, right? But um, yeah, it was kind of a time where we're trying to figure out how to provide platforms for our haumana here. Um, mostly kalamai. <laughs> Mostly because, and I'm a crier. <laughs> Mostly because it wasn't, we didn't feel like it was this place that we could come to. <laughs> Coming from Kayapuni, it's just so different. Um, which is why I get so emotional. Um, and not saying that this school neglects and um, doesn't have all those things because I'm so grateful for what this school has done for all of our keiki. Um, not only Kaipuni, but our keiki Hawaii, you know, um, really equipping them with what they need to find their culture. And just in previous conversations prior to this session starting, like we were just meeting amongst each other and talking with alumni that had had the same journeys and we kind of stumbled across this word of born again Hawaiians and like kind of just like wow like I thought I was only the only one that used that terminology but you know some people view it as like something bad but it's not you know it's like we all are so exposed or not exposed to different experiences or upbringing you know especially that's rooted in culture so that's something so dear to myself and my na'o and our ohana. So, you know, if you're probably wondering, why is this girl crying? It, because it's so <laughs> dear to me, you know, it, it's like, it's like a member of our ohana. Um, and which is why we're doing the work that we're doing right now, um, giving back to 
our place that really brought us up and gave us purpose. Um, this kula really allowed us to see how privileged we were, you know. Like um, Anake said, like a lot of Kaipuni students kind of get overlooked. Um, with this English thing, right? And how can you move forward in society with having a degree in Hawaiian language, um, Hawaiian studies? Like, what are you going to do? And it's a conversation that still lingers still to today. I'm like, we've come so far, I feel, um, as a Lahui, as educators, right? Really, like, looking at, wow, like, before we, you know, these things are real scarce, like abundant in families, right? Certain families, certain areas in Hawaii, even outside of Hawaii, you know? But like, I feel like this time it, we're really like trying to reconnect and really gather together, right? And how can we work together to build these things that we need for everybody, not just here, right? How can we offer outreach services? How can we really strengthen each other? And I feel that, um, yeah, it was a time of just kind of finding our footing. Um, there wasn't many of us that could speak Hawaiian on this campus, and I'm not saying that's a requirement, but that was kind of like our um, our blanket, yeah. Like, and in a way, it was also like, oh, look, look, those those guys over there speaking Hawaiian with each other. We only get five of them on campus, but you know, it allowed us to really open a lot of avenues and pathways which I feel are abundant today, are even more, you know, just present. Um, yeah, just so different. I hate to say that I'm from the dinosaur age because <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, these guys are so much younger than I. But like, you know, every one of us, you know, in this journey really left some kind of, you know, reflection upon, I'm, I'm sure, you know, all of these students have, like, on decisions for administration, for a higher up, right? I'm like, what is our new Kia for this school? What is our, what outcome do we want for our students? And what's so important? And what we value certainly is um, um, more of a cultural-based education, right, that incorporates not only Ike Hawaii, but also the language. And so I'm... On, honestly, like, so happy where this school is right now. Like, when we were here back then, like, we had a special little classroom, just five of us. You know, we had our Papa Olelo. Uh, we had, you know, Papa Hula and stuff, but we didn't have academies, right? We didn't have pathways to really prepare us to go down this avenue of education, specifically in um, culture, right, in Hawaii, in anything Hawaii. So, um it was just that time, you know? Um, but look where we are now. Um, look what we are able to provide for our students here and for many, you know, outside of these, um, this school. And uh, it was just necessary, you know? Like, we can always hope and want more, but um, yeah, we're all doing the work that we're, we're here to do. And yeah, like, took you down a whole path of reflection, but <laughs> it's great because, you know, like we don't have this time and space, right? We're always just preparing for our kiki and we're doing what we got to do to to build our lahui and all of those things. Like you hear that a lot, right? But really, like, I'm grateful. Yeah. Mahalo. I think for me coming from... Um, mm -hmm public school system where Hawaiian immersion wasn't necessarily present um, in, within that education system and coming to Kamehameha schools, um, I'm going to use a term Kaimi used in his last session, KS, it's KS's fault I am the way I am today. <laughs> um, coming from that, if, if you kind of understand both sides of that, that phrase, um, it is because Kamehameha schools that, that I was able to identify this is what it, what it is like being Hawaiian coming from a place where Hawaiian did not exist, although there were native Hawaiians within that, that elementary education system. Um, and then coming from a familial background where we did not necessarily practice culture, did not necessarily practice Olelo Hawaii in the household. So coming here, being in a space where we see building names titled after our ali'i, we see um, all of these different Olelo Noel posted within the classroom walls. That was a really big eye-opener eye for me um, as a Kanaka, taking my first steps to building my identity as a Native Hawaiian within, in my own Aina. Um, the flip side of that 
It is also because of Kamehameha that I realized there are also things throughout my journey here um, that I may have missed, um, that, I, that I was eager to learn more about. So after leaving Kamehameha, they had set the foundation, the pathway that this is possible to acquire, um, this is possible to achieve, and continuing my education at UH Hilo through our Hawaiian Studies program, utilizing the foundations I've developed through Kamehameha schools, I was able to build upon that to become more of, or to identify more the kanaka I am and the function I serve for my lahui today. I think that's the big thing is identity, like how you're mentioning. Like for Kayapuni Haumana, we kind of, we had that um, strong foundation in culture, in, you know, Hawaiian values and just being around the language and that's how we were brought up in our ohana. And a lot of <clears throat> my classmates, they didn't have that. So they lacked that identity. You know, we all come to this kula because we're Hawaiian, right? This is the Hawaiian school. But a lot of my, um, you know, counterparts, they didn't feel like they were Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. They did, they felt like they're not Hawaiian enough. Mm -hmm. And just because you come to this school, we're all Hawaiian, but they didn't feel that because they just lacked that, you know, that background, that foundation. So, I mean, it's really nice to see that there's a change happening at this school. Mm -hmm. Not like it wasn't present when we were here. It just wasn't everywhere. Like I said, we, ha we have the buildings that, you know, have Hawaiian names. Paki and Konia, that's what we refer to it to. But, um, you know, the other buildings, we didn't really refer to it by its Hawaiian name. Mm -hmm. The glass building, that's what we call that, or the CRB, like that's where you're- The your, fishbowl. Where, yeah, where's your class? Wow. <laughs> you know, like it wasn't, our language wasn't really present everywhere. And just looking at this hale aina, you know, ke komo ana, kapuka ana, those little things um, make a big difference and help Haumana to connect, you know, to our culture, our language. And, you know, you don't have to be a Hawaiian language major or go into Hawaiian studies to learn your language, to learn your culture. So it's nice to kind of see that shift happening here because it wasn't as present when we were here. Like she was saying, we have our Papa Olelo class where we felt at home, you know, we can finally Olelo Hawaii with our peers, with our kumu. We have our Hawaiian studies kind of courses. That's where we felt at home or at Oli in the beginning of the week, we had um, Oli on Mondays, I think. And of course, Kayapuni students get alakai. You're gonna, this is the first time I'm here, but okay, I'm gonna alakai in front of these group of students that I don't even know. But um, the foundation that I had, you know, gave me that confidence to do that. So it's really nice to see that shift um, here at Kamehameha because our, all of our homana need that, need that culture. It's a part of our identity. And, you know, we need to get back to that. Um, for me, my ohana, there's nobody that speaks Olelo Hawaii. There's nobody that raised us to learn anything about Hawaiian culture. My, my mom is actually from Vietnam. So when she moved here and what she was thinking is, you know, I want the best education for my kids, for myself and my older brother. And my older brother got into Kamehameha schools early on from kindergarten and so I think when it came to the time to decide what she wanted for me, she's just thinking, you know, my daughter's Hawaiian, my kids are Hawaiian, here's a private school, everyone raves about, you know, they're going to get a good education, and this is where I want them to go. So I don't think she put, not that my mom didn't put thought into it, but she didn't put much more thought besides that. You know, this is a school that produces college-ready kids, and this is a school for people of Hawaiian ancestry, so why wouldn't she go there? Um, but for me, going from an elementary school where I, where I didn't know, I didn't speak Hawaiian, I didn't know anything about Hawaiian culture, um, the school that I went to barely provided anything of that, just what is required, you know, learning how to say aloha, pehea oi, mm -hmm. to moving into this school, I was actually teased a lot in sixth grade because I didn't even know how to speak. I couldn't count to 10 in Hawaiian. And I remember that. I remember that really, really well, coming into this school and feeling so scared being surrounded by things that I shouldn't be, shouldn't have been scared of. Speaking Hawaiian, something that's part of, you know, my my culture. And then I went into Kumu Moani's class. <laughs> that was the first time I was in uh, Olalo Hawaii class, and I fell in love with it. And I remember thinking, you know, 
I, I want to do this. I want to I want to speak Olala Hawaii. You know, all these kids are teasing me. I can't count Kahilua Kolu right now, but watch later. I watch later. In Kumumwani's class, I fell in love with Olala Hawaii. And I just I know that I had some friends that were already in the high school and they said, you know, you can choose Hawaiian language. We get Spanish, we get Japanese. I was like, oh, no, Hawaiian. I'll, I'll be staying in Hawaiian. You know, even if at that time that wasn't what I had planned doing, on um, doing with my education going into my career later you know I actually thought I wanted to go into the science field I wanted to be a forensic scientist but I going through the Hawaiian language classes that we had here I felt so much kuleana to really see how far I can take this and how far I can push limits how many you know stereotypes people put Hawaiian in and it's hard because you know a lot of people say what are you going to do with your Hawaiian language degree you're going to become a teacher yeah, <laughs> I became a teacher, but that's not something that I'm ashamed of. That's something that I, you know, I really wanted. I realized that not only did I want to learn about Hawaiian, but I wanted to make sure that I, I put that kind of i'ini, I put that passion inside of, you know, my homana, like Kumu Moani did and Kumu Kalei and Kumu Heno, about putting that i'ini inside my homana and making sure that, you know, this continues on. It's not going to stop with me. And so from going to... Uh, Public school, not knowing anything about Hawaiian, learning, coming to Kamehameha was a really, honestly, it was kind of a culture shock for me um, because my mom wouldn't even let me speak pidgin at the house because, you know, coming from Vietnam, she's thinking, I need to get my kids speaking English. I don't want them having a hard time like I did, and I'm a hollow her for that every day. But coming here and, you know, getting teased for not being Hawaiian enough was really hard. And then going through Kamehameha, learning, you know, okay, this is what Hawaiian looks like. For me, this is what Hawaiian looks like. For them, maybe it was a little bit different. They come from a setting that's super Hawaiian culture based. For me, it was the opposite. I'm thinking, this is the epitome of Hawaiian culture. And for me to go into Kula Kayapuni teaching at our immersion schools now, I can see maybe what they saw when they were keiki. You know, and I see how from here I'm thinking this is the top of the top. This is this is Hawaiian and going into Hawaiian immersion. I'm thinking, no, this is Hawaiian. <laughs> this is what you know, I start seeing maybe what I might have missed a little bit in Kamehameha to no fault here. But I, you know, for me, it's kind of like that saying, like, the more you learn, the more you learn, you don't know <laughs> or yeah. something like that. You know, um, going into Kayapuni school, I realized there's so much more than just what I learned at Kamehameha. And that's, there again was another culture shock. So it's just, it's been a huge journey um, going from not knowing anything, learning a little bit, and now realizing that there's still so much more to learn for me. Wow, so well put, thank you. Aloha. <laughs> um, ditto. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. I think this is what happens when you're the last speaker. Now you're like, oh no, what do I say? <laughs> um, but I kako'o, I support all their mana'o, um, especially that mana'o of this being our identity. You know, it's who we are. And even if you're not Hawaiian, mm -hmm. you have that kuleana to teach these kids because they are Hawaiian. Yeah, and so. For me, coming to, Kaya, uh, to Kamehameha, I was hoping for that. I was hoping that I would come in here and I would come and attend this school and I would have that same pilina that I had with my kumu. And luckily I did with some of my kumu here that I see. Um, but for the most part, culture and language was sprinkled. Yeah, it was this little topping that you put on as a little fancy, a fancy. Ice cream. Yeah, it was a little sprinkles <laughs> on the salad, ice cream. Uh, maybe furikake on the rice. But, <laughs> and it's ono, you love it, but you want to eat it and digest it. That's what we wanted, and that's, that's not what we got. You know, um, I think like Kahayola was saying, this is a time of a hulihia, you know, where when we were going to school, it was a totally different no. It was a different time period where there was Hawaiian Ensemble, you know, the only places that sprinkled um, all this culture and language was Hawaiian Ensemble, what else, Papa Olelo, um, Hawaiian History, Hawaiian History, yes. Yeah, like there, it wasn't a lot of olelo and culture that is seen today, which 
coming back this summer and seeing all these high Hawaii, these signs, people saying aloha, you know, even those that work outside um, are asking pehea oi. You know, simple things like that. It has inspired me and, and proved that Kamehameha can do it. You know, it's, it's wanting to do it. It's that willingness to be vulnerable in your own teaching of, I got this because I teach Hawaiian kids. It's their birthright to learn Hawaiian culture. It's their birthright to learn their language. And so who am I, and this is, this is for me as a kumu, is who am I to strip that from them? You know, that's my kuleana, is to provide all of these tools for them to succeed as a Hawaiian. And if I'm not supplying them or providing those supplies or tools, then what am I doing? You know, what, what's going on? And I wish that when I came to Kamehameha, there was more of us that could olelo. Um, but at the same time, coming was a total blessing because I got to meet all these friends and we would have these like vala'o, you know, sessions, even with kumu, you know, and you can look at it as, oh yeah, here's a kayapuni kid, you know, kid, do the pule, do the oli, and that's who we were. That's what we did all the time. It was, okay, like Julia said, start the oli, okay, stand outside, you do the pule, do you know this oli, do you know this hula, and yes, we do, but we also have friends that could do it too, you know, like, we can help teach them, I don't know, we don't have to do it all the time. Um, but again, to just see the holomua, you know, of the progress of Kamehameha, yet there's still so much to do. Um, it's not, yay, we have culture, a little bit culture, more culture than 2011, and we stop there. You know, it's, oh no, it's a never ending snowball. You keep going, you go, go, go. And I think that's what uh, Kayapuni brings, right? Is that sense of, we no stop. We just keep going. You know, the ball is constantly going because we have kuleana. Um, and so I think coming again, attending, um, Kamehameha as a 10th grader as well. Um, I didn't come as a kindergartner or even in sixth grade. So I had a lot of background of Ike Hawaii, of language coming in. And I was hoping for that. Um, and I, you know, the sprinkles could be more than just sprinkles. You know, it can be meals. It can't just be the sprinkle. It cannot even be the side dish. It needs to be the main dish that's on your plate that you're serving to our students. Um, oh, you know. Mahalo. And you know, she wasn't even there for um, Ka'ini's talk. So <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're all aligned. I actually have um, two questions left. And, and I know we don't have much time, so I'm going to try to figure out which, which question is the most important. But before I do that, you know, I also wanted to say they influenced their classmates to become immersion teachers. So it's pretty cool that, um, you know, their own classmates got excited and thought, well, if you can, I can, and ended up teaching together. I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I think I'm going to choose this one um, because I, looking at our group, it might be valuable to respond to this. Um, so teaching and immersion, you have to teach it all, right? You have to teach science, social studies, everything. And then and with you, Coco, you're teaching English. And, but all of this is done through Hawaiian. So you know when we hear our teachers say, oh, you know, I don't know how to get culture into world history or into English or science. Um, what would you say to that? How do you do it? Because it's not just teaching it in Hawaiian, right? You don't just have a curriculum that's an English curriculum that you do in Hawaiian. You do it from a culturally based space. So what does that look like when, when you do it? 
Um, so for me, I do teach a number of subjects, which is very difficult. Um, right now, I'm teach I will be teaching English language arts, Hawaiian language arts, and uh, world history. And it, it is a lot of work trying to create curriculum that is, you know, fully making sure that Hawaiian culture, Hawaiian lavena, you know, our behaviors are just how we're doing it, our values are at the forefront. And, you know, some people are like, how do you teach English with a Hawaiian mindset? And, you know, that, that was my question when I got thrown into English um, when I started teaching that last year. And a lot of it is just making sure that, like I said, Hawaiian values are at the forefront. I'm making sure that these kids understand that even though this is called English language arts class, I'm giving you all my Hawaiian values. I'm showing you what, what we need to learn, and English is kind of on the side. And sometimes, you know, people might think, well, how are you going to prep them for college? You know, they're going to have to take English 100. They're going to have to take all these classes. Um, it's really about getting them interested into the subject. And for me, especially at the Hawaiian Immersion School, you have a lot of kids that are like these three, you know, very Hawaiian culture based, a lot of Ike Hawaii. They're not going to want to learn English. <laughs> that, was, that was the main problem for me last year is trying to get these kids interested in English. So what did I do? I took them outside. We have so many mala, we have so many gardens on our campus, you know. When we had to learn figurative language, when we had to go through learning about poetry, you know, I take them outside, use your senses. Everything that we do in the mala, we work in the mala all the time. You know, everyone thinks that's a, that's a Hawaiian thing to do, go work in the mala, go huki the kalo. But that's what, the, that's this, their lifestyle. You know, they're so accustomed to that. So I take them, I see, I try to find things that they're used to. And then they realize, oh, okay, we're doing this. This is something I'm very used to. How, how are you going to tie this back to English? Okay, use all your senses. What did you see in the mala? What did you feel in the mala? What did you hear in the mala? Turn that into a poem for, for English class. You know, something as simple as that. And for world history, I have so much Ike from Mr. O'Brien's class. I still carry around my world history binder everywhere with me. <laughs> and you know, I, I talk to Mr. O'Brien too about curriculum and I look through my binder all the time and figure out, you know, how am I going to take what he taught me and make sure that it's relative to my kids? You know, so what something, you know, for world history, I look at Kalakaua's um, journey around the world from 1881 and I start there. I show them, you know, why did Kalakaua go around the world? What did he see in Hawaii that made him think, I need to puka ivaho. I need to go get someone else's perspective. I need to go see the world, you know. And then they start to realize, oh, okay, yeah, I know a lot about Hawaii, but maybe some things that I'll learn outside will help me when I come back to Hawaii. So they start to see that. And I follow, for the ninth graders, I follow Kalakaua's journey where he went on his huaka'i. And we learn things that Mr. O'Brien taught me in his class, right? I, I teach them about the Roman the civilization. I teach them, um, you know, all about the different kinds of government and things like that. But always tying it back to how is that going to help us mahavaiine? How is that going to help? You know, not just memorizing dates and knowing where everything is on a map, but how is that going to help them learn about their culture and their kind of, you know, the education that they need here. And if I could say one more thing, yeah. you know, for um, Olalo Hawaii, at our school, we don't call it Papa Olalo Hawaii, Hawaiian language class. We call it Mako Olalo Hawaii, which is Hawaiian language arts class, which is something very important, something that our admin is very adamant about, saying that we don't teach Hawaiian language. Right. We teach Hawaiian language skills, we teach Hawaiian language grammar, because for these kids, they've been speaking Olalo Hawaii their whole life. I'm not going to teach it to them. You know, they, they probably know more than me. <laughs> their vocabulary is extensive. It's, it's a lot. But, you know, to teach skills, it's really important that we're not saying we're teaching Hawaiian language. They, they've already acquired it. And to just strengthen that and making sure that, you know, we'll just fix these little things so that maybe you could, you know, help others along the way. And we're, t we're making sure that we're perpetuating the, the language of our kupuna, you know, not speaking English with Hawaiian words, which I see a lot. I had one of my kids the other day, and for the kumus that olalo hawaii, I'm sure they'll get a crack out of this, but he was telling me about something that happened the past weekend, and he's like, yeah, kumu, I have all makapaka, I will hopuka opala ikiahi. And he's literally trying to say the trash caught on fire. But what he's saying is catching like this for hofu. And he's saying that the, the trash caught something like that. And you know, when I heard that, I was like, oh, I got to work on this. You know, this kid is definitely speaking with an English mindset. And he's just using Hawaiian words. That's so okoa. That's so different from, you know, 
learning how to properly say it, how to envision it in Hawaiian instead of envisioning it in Hawaiian. And then here I am, um, hopu equals catch, opala equals trash. You know, it's it's so different to get them to think in Hawaiian than to just speak in Hawaiian. So, mm -hmm. it it's definitely hard coming up with curriculum like that. But it's it's also so rewarding when you yeah. see how it yeah. how it affects them afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like on this campus and even outside, like you identify your resources, right? Like we're not saying, okay, everybody, what are you guys gonna do now? You know, how are you gonna make, you hear this whole Hawaii, how do you make it more Hawaiian kind of a thing? And it's not anything to make you feel less like, oh my gosh, am I not doing like enough culture? Am I not doing enough to make these kids Hawaiian? It's not about that. It's about this learning journey, right? Teachers, we're always we're always learning, right? Not just the students. We we go into these PDs, we go to all of these conferences to learn more. And so, if you look back at our homeland right here, just on this campus alone, like there's so many resources that could offer that bridge, right? To really allow us to connect. Um, the school provides a lot of cultural um, experiences, a lot of huakai, right? A lot of these things that are now so. Um, prevalent here on this campus but as educators that are kind of looking for a way to you know find what we're kind of talking about and it's so individual right it all comes in your own timing and your own journey but collaborating is probably the biggest thing that allows all of us even if we have these skills or came from these backgrounds or not like Working together, you bring all of that to the table, right? Mm -hmm. All of these talents that come from here and there allow us to really grow and understand each other, right? And connect because we don't come from the same hale. We don't come from the same places. And it's important to honor where you come from, regardless of if it's Hawaiian or not, right? And then you find your ways to really mend and really allow yourself to kind of feel right without feeling you're just teaching right like you got to feel something right you got to really connect to it and then that becomes your passion and when you're passionate about something it just comes naturally so like that's one thing that at Kayapuni at Paia like you know a lot of the times we're like trying to like think so much like what else can we do and then like we have these moments where we pause and we're like Oh my gosh, like, oh yeah, oh yeah, we know him, oh yeah, like, you know, like, we know how to do this, and, like, you get so caught up, right, in keeping up with standards, and keeping up with all of these new technology, and all of these new curriculum that comes up, and we struggle with that also at Kayapuni, you know, like, oh my gosh, like, are we preparing them enough for the world, right, like, we have the same conversations, regardless of where you're at, in education, you know, like, Education is education. You find your similarities, you find your differences, but at the end of the day, we're all just trying to yeah. make all of this better, right? How can we better this? And so now that we have purpose, right? Like we're, we're kind of in this revitalization stage of really finding and rooting ourselves in what Kamehameha is said to be and what it is and what it's going to be and all of these things, right? It's all perspective. But the main thing is just honoring where you come from, right? And being open and allowing yourself to feel what it is, regardless of where you are. Environment is huge, you know? Like, that's probably the biggest thing for us at Paia. It's real hot down there, but the environment is why that really attracts us to be there. You know, it's like, it's all about feeling. You're not out. And wherever you feel, you belong. It's where you belong, you know? No one can tell you where you're supposed to be. And you go through these journeys like, oh yeah, I used to be here, I used to be there, and all of this. But honoring your timeline, honoring all of those steps that allowed you to become and develop as an educator is so important. And not to say that you don't know enough to be who you're supposed to be at this said, this who campus, but just always remembering that, you know? We're ohana, right? Where we all have things to offer. And that's why we have these kind of conversations, right? That allow us to, oh, okay, like think of other things that are not necessarily out of the box, but maybe new, that are not so new to some of us. And um, that's why we do the work that we do. You know, we're always trying to gather more to better what our purpose is in our careers. So.
I think too, when it comes to culture-based education, it's a kuleana, you know, and it's something that anyone in any subject can do. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Culture and language is interdisciplinary. It's not something that I have to have a Makau Olalo Hawaii class. I have to have a Makau uh, Ike Hawaii class to teach these things. You can teach English culture in your English class. You can teach culture and language in economics. You know, what, what it really is, is bringing it back home for the keiki tying all the things that you you do teach now because not to say that what you do what we learned you know when we were going to school wasn't valuable because i loved every single class that i had here every single class just like coco casey said i i have to say coco casey it's just i just love that name i'm like coco casey coco casey i just love that name it's a great one um but you know like coco casey said about Coach O'Brien's, Mr. O'Brien's folder. I still have it and I still use it. I use it with my third graders at Kayapuni. You know, just simple things of, okay, this is government. This is how we do it. Did you know that this is how they did it over there? But guess what? This is how we do it here, okay? And it's bringing it back to them. Because like Julia said, it's part culture based is identity stuff. It's about tapping into their DNA because we teach our keiki Hawaii, you know, so it's our kuleana to ho'onani akahi to implement and integrate all these things, all this culture into our, our practice, into our lessons. And it's something that can be done. It's not something that you can just do overnight. You know, it's yeah. not tomorrow I'm going to wake up and yeah, here it is. But <laughs> we have to try, you know, and that's not to say that Kayapuni, we're all glorious because we could take some professional development. <laughs> <laughs> we really could. Some. Yeah. yeah, some, no, we could take a lot, you know, of just things that you guys provide, you know, we could take back from that, uh, take from, um, from what you guys provide. So, you know, I think culture base is something that can be integrated in every subject. It's not left for just those kanaka over there. You can do it. Mm-hmm. We can do it, you know, and, and I think that as Kumukaya Puni, we're always down to Kokua. We're always here and we, we actually want to. You know, we want to work with our Kumu and see how things are going. So, Mia Manao, mahalo. I think the biggest thing that we can take away from that is um, just building that connection, not only within, with our Haumana, that's a big thing, you know, the first couple of weeks, you're trying to build relationships with your keiki. You're trying to get to know them. You're trying to, you know, just make that connection. So I think that's like the biggest thing when it comes to culture-based education. You're teaching Hawaiian keiki and, you know, you're trying to help them find that identity, you know, what makes them them? Where did their, where did they come from? Where is their ohana? Where, what aina do they live in? Where, where were they born? All of those things are very Hawaii, you know, this is, um, Things that are really nui to us, he mea nui. You know, the first thing that you ask somebody is like, "O vai oi, no he mai oi." Where are you from? You know, building those connections. It's those little things, and not only the connections with your haumana, but with your peers, with your coworkers. You know, in Kayapuni, we, that's what we do a lot. We collaborate with each other. You know, like, oh, what are you doing? How are you teaching this? You know, how are you getting the, through to your haumana? Because we're all different. We all come from a different place we have different ike and it's just nice to you know kind of see that collaboration happening here and just having the conversation is the first step yeah i guess i'm going to funny this question yes uh, work, so i i don't teach any of these subjects um in the university system but i work with faculty and staff who do um and who need to integrate some kind of foundational cultural uh, understanding into the course curriculums they provide in their field of studies. One thing that I learned through this process was sometimes it's not changing the curriculum, but changing the perspective that Kumu is walking into this experience with. That it's more than just 
learning Olel Hawaii, changing and translating what my curriculum is to, to, to sound Hawaiian. It's more than just taking what I learned in Papua and integrating it into my, my curriculum. We have to live it, we have to practice it, we have to understand it in order for us to deliver something that is beneficial to the, to the Hawaiian that we're teaching it to. Um, and so what, what we practice in some ways that, that, that we do this is looking at um, like mo'olalo, ka'ao, looking at our mele. If you're an English teacher, why are, we, why are we looking at the tree little pig still? You know, putting hi'iaki kapoli opele into there. Put in kamiki, put in all of, we have all of these access to ka'au and mo'olelo, but we don't utilize it in our educational systems. If you're a science teacher, what are you doing to, to help Hawaiian students understand the exchange of, of temperature? Kilo, look outside. Mm -hmm. Utilize our cloud formations to help us, to help inform us that when we see this kind of cloud formation happening, there's an exchange of high temperature winds and low temperature currents that is creating this kind of formation. And what does that tell us? A storm is coming. You know, all of these kinds of things that, that takes us away from the textbook and helps us to, 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 to apply it to our lives. And it becomes, it becomes more than just, oh, this is a stressor because I got to go to this class to learn this thing. It becomes a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And you cannot complain about the way you live, right, when, when it's your lifestyle. And so for, for us, at, at least at, at that level, and with the teachers or the faculty and staff that I work with, it's more breaking through to them that I'm not here to provide textbook lessons. I'm here to provide life lessons that hopefully you can uh, internalize for yourself, analyze for yourself, how are you as that individual holding this kuleana to provide education to our native Hawaiian communities gonna be able to apply that to what you do in your profession. Mahalo Nui Ho, oh, we've been blessed, y'all. Yeah? We wish everybody could hear it. Right. You know, um, my final question was gonna be about, so what does Kamehameha do? We have over 1,100 opportunities every day to, to give to the Lahui. And what are we doing, you know? And so I really appreciate that the five of you showed up that you shared your mana'o, and that you were honest and gave, gave your best. They said that they're willing to collaborate, so use them. <laughs> Call them, email, we can hook you up. <laughs> they're willing to help, help us navigate this HCBE process, yeah? So mahalo nui, everyone, for joining us. Lunch should be on its way. We're good. So um, again, mahalo nui. Mahalo. 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 Mahalo.